Okay, we're back live here in Orlando for IBM Edge 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. We're out scouring the, the hallways, the sessions. I'm joined by my co-host, John MacArthur, co-host of it today. John, we have Kerry Johns Vano from Intel Storage, uh, who recently has a new role at Intel, but you've been on theCUBE many times, but still in storage. Yeah. Uh, exciting to see you again. Yeah, you so, too. So what's new? Tell us about what's going on, your new role. Yeah. and uh, what's happened with Intel storage. Well, um, storage is growing, as you know, right? And so we're, our focus is always changing, it seems, right? We have um, really focused on scale-out storage. So we're really helping a lot of our partners move to scale-out storage based on the unstructured data growth. But I think one of the things that we're really embracing now is the future of storage and where it's going based on big data, based on massive data, fast data, and um, how storage is going to evolve. So we're really looking at um, enabling the ecosystem to create ubiquitous storage or pervasive storage where um, storage is going to become a, a service on standard high volume servers. Right? Well, we had the cube at Intel NAB. Mm -hmm. um, you guys hosted us there, and we'd yeah. be able to do the cube there. And one of the exciting things at uh, NAB was Thunderbolt. Yeah. and moving data around really, really fast. And mm -hmm. so data is no brainer, it's growing like crazy. Machines have are throwing off data, users are throwing off data, applications are throwing off data, massive tsunami of data, new types of data, right. dealing with unstructured data. So what is the definition of future of storage for the new guys? What's the vision? So, so for us, the vision for storage in the future is that it becomes ubiquitous, right? It becomes pervasive. It becomes the data centers transform to a point where you know you basically have pools of resources of compute, storage, and networking that you can dynamically allocate and, and secure as you move across public and private cloud, um, across service providers, and um, have multi-tenancy type of tiering, right? So all of those things become important and they're very dynamic, right? Yeah, so I'm interested, in, and so where does Intel, uh, where's the line between Intel and Intel's partners sort of lie? What do you mean the line? What, what, like, well, what, what, what's Intel's what, contribution? What's, what's Intel's primary thinking about the, where do they, where are you going to contribute? Because you've you've had a number of sort of initiatives mm -hmm. in the storage space where you, you've developed solutions for the white box market. You developed a, a, a mm -hmm. lot of things. Yeah, I think you know. I mean, our key role is really to provide the fundamental building block that creates that foundation of intelligence for storage. And there's right? an awful lot of storage that runs on Intel today. Right? Yeah, it, like, yeah. I don't know what the percentages right. are. Is anybody so doing it, numbers on that? Yeah. Somebody it's 80% um, market segment share. Um, we currently have um, Xeon into for yeah. you know shipping storage systems that are shipping today. It's about 80% market segment share. Okay. So, you know, I mean, our focus is really on being that foundation to provide the intelligence in the right and you know, you mentioned about I.O. and memory and stuff, and that, that stuff is really important to storage. And, and as we saw in the keynote this morning, right, memory is becoming more and more important as it um, plays a key role, especially in data analytics, right, where you've got things real time, you've got to do real time compression, you've got to real, do real time tweets. There's millions and millions of users accessing at the same time, right? And so I.O., memory, that stuff is really important. So we're really looking at how do we take our multi-core architecture, how do we optimize that so that you can get quick access to the cache, you can get quick access and, and high bandwidth through I.O. and quick access to the memory. That's been one of the themes obviously here at IBM has been the whole notion that with all the compute, mm -hmm. with all the cores, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> that's the storage. <laughs> Make the storage, enable the storage to be faster and yeah. have more diverse storage types. How do you guys look at that? And have more efficiencies, yeah. Well, we've, um, the, our E5 processor that we just released, um, that is the first standard server processor that has integrated storage features in there. And we continue to increase the I.O. and the memory and uh, I mean, we have 2x and 3x improvements in I.O. and memory today in that E5 processor. But those advanced storage features were only found in SOCs prior to the E5 generation. So, you know, our goal is to continue the integration, continue the convergence, so that servers and storage, the line between servers and storage becomes closer, right? That 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 gap is not as far as it is today with some of your traditional purpose-built storage, right? So you guys like fl the whole flash movement. You got to be excited by yeah, what's going on with flash. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at the, um, if you compare, you know, hard drive, 
you know, performance and how it's evolved over the years, right? And then you compare Moore's Law, and then you look at how Flash is, is really kind of bridging that gap. It's, it's um, you know, it's one of those technologies. Yeah. It's not going to be, you know, the do-all, end-all for, for everything because storage workloads are different, right? Well, what, do you, what do you say to customers uh, um, that want to know what's going on with storage? Because they're bombarded with a lot of, you know, market data, all this stuff's going on. They have to re-architect their environments. We've talked extensively yesterday and today around how Flash is changing its server. You got Flash everywhere. It's kind mm -hmm. of a theme here. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk to customers and they say, yeah, Gary, just tell me the bottom line. What's going on in storage? <laughs> From, from our customer base, if you, I mean, take, take Intel IT as an example, right? Diane um, talked about that in her keynote this morning, but um, you know, the customers that are, the IT customers out there, the end users out there that are looking for storage efficiencies, they're really looking across their data center and how do I transform my IT to optimize my workloads? And usually that's not just one solution, usually it's a combination of various solutions, including flash, including strategically placing SSDs, right? Mm -hmm. Including how many tiers of storage do I need so that I can optimize that, that storage, you know, real estate, right? right. And so it's, um, you know, that, that's the exciting thing to me, I think, and, but also the, the complexity about it is that it's not a one size fits all, right? We don't have these, standard, like in the server world, right, where you've got this big ecosystem, things are highly virtualized. Um, but I think as storage continues to get it converged with server and closer to server, um, we could see that in the future, right? If storage becomes a service, it could be um, a lot more standardized. What do, you, what do you think about the IBM show here this week? It's great, it's it's really been good. I mean, we we are a diamond sponsor and um, we've had a lot of great collaboration with them. I think the um, the format's been awesome. The keynotes have been great and of course this they message have of, of portfolio is interesting, right? They're bringing more solutions yeah, to bear. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the messaging was was really um, was really good, right? I think that they're they're trying to really converge or you know, rally around a few key things like Agile Cloud, et cetera, their integrated solutions, and then there was the third pillar, I can't remember, but um, it's good to see that cohesiveness across all of their sessions and across the whole show. I thought that that was... Intel's customers, obviously, and people like IBM buying stuff from you guys. What are their number one concerns on the roadmap when they buy future products? What is the, what's the, what's the direction for you guys? The direction, well, the direction for us from a roadmap perspective is is really how do we continue to help the solution providers break the bottlenecks that, that they face in IT, right? Um, for storage, a lot of it's around I.O., memory. Um, how do we optimize, when we add multiple cords, how do we optimize the cache and the capability of everybody accessing that simultaneously? Right, so we're looking, and we work with a lot of our partners three, five years in advance. We have these like two days, you know, architectural summits where we lock them all in a room with our partners um, one at a time, right? And yeah. um, we get their direct input to, you know, what they'd like to see in storage systems. I guess if, if the story is flash everywhere that IBM is promoting, your message is processors everywhere, right? Cores. Yeah. Because you could put cores now on everything. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The compute power, compute is is more and more important as the storage workloads become more. How is that changing complex. some of the backup and recovery and paradigms? Are you seeing any trends you can share with folks around adding more cores and more flash and more storage technology? How is it changing the oh, backup and recovery? Absolutely, it. Um, you know, it, people are offloading things to. I mean, tape's not going to go away, but they can they can add on automated storage tiering. They can offload things to you know, other types of media, depending on the usage of the, the data, right? Is it, you know, really archived or is it, you know, and the recovery time is, is a lot quicker. So, server uh, has, been on a, has been on a fairly fast refresh cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, storage tends to have a longer refresh cycle. Yes. Right? 
Yeah. How did, and, and but the but the process of refresh cycle is pretty consistent, right? It's correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How does that yeah. impact sort of? Well, I think that's a result of the evolution of storage, right? And how storage evolved from a very purpose-built, you know, vertically scaled system to now scale out storage, which is, um, according to analysts, going to be about 80% of the market segment share by 2015. Um, so it's evolving, right? And, and as we look at the future where storage becomes an application or service, then you know, then you get closer to these refresh cycles. Do you think we'll get um, on a similar refresh cycle on storage? As we've I think been if on we can realize the future vision, yeah. yeah, yeah. As long as we don't have to move we're the data closer. on the back end too much. Yeah, that's we're, the that's the well, problem. That's, you can move you know, a workload faster yeah. than you can move the data. Right, right. right. So. And you know, there's improvements you've seen at IBM Edge here today that you know they're um, they're implementing. Um, capabilities, storage capabilities that approve that, moving the data. Because right, anytime I, you retire something, you have to move the data and, you know, right. it's... So I, you know, I think one of the things that's sort of interesting with this uh, sand volume controller um, uh, technology that they're implementing in some of their solutions, it's been out there for a while, but it is the ability to maybe add uh, uh, new levels of services to, without having to necessarily Move the data right away. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And then when you add the cat, when you, when you add the solid state disk up at that layer, then you can improve yeah. the performance of the back end. So right, yeah. If you look at today's the latest greatest today's storage systems out there, there's significant improvements that they made. Yeah. You know, they're making and they're making them fast. I mean, things are moving fast in storage. So, you know, and many of our vendors are. Um, really striving to be more time time to market. You know, they see they see the benefits. It's just, you know, it's just a matter of things moving fast enough and then moving fast enough to get right. there, right? Um, and and it's also going to take a little bit. Um, you know, storage systems are, you know, have mission critical requirements, have certification requirements, so they've got to get a design cycle that works with that as well. There are a lot of Asian suppliers that are really going after the high volume market and mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. really crushing it on the on the high volume, very cheap, very stupid storage, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just pop it out. Yeah, we're working with, um, well, China's, know, China's got I, the I, smart I, city, right? Right. Going on, and right. um, and we're working with many of the vendors over there to, to build out these data centers, Baidu, and and other folks, UIT, uh -huh. um, to, to build out these big data centers that um, that are pretty um, kind of like a you know cloud a cloud model, scalable like an Amazon Google right. type of model. Yeah, in those cases, that you've got a lot of maybe not too bright storage, but then above that, you've got a level of sort of data management capabilities yes. and intelligence. Uh, intelligence yeah. that's, right. that it also probably runs on Intel, but it's not part of a storage controller. Or a, Exactly. Right. Right. So right. They're they're really kind of a leap ahead, right, in that standardization vision that I talked about, yeah. right? And that's that's their vision. They want to be able to, you know, provide this capability to with huge amount of capacity and performance, right? But they want that, that management layer over it so that it's simple, right? Because they want to be able to refresh on the latest, greatest hardware and they're using mostly standard hardware today. Right. With a bunch of disks, right? Yeah, with very tight budgets. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> lots yeah. and lots of capacity, but really tight budgets. Right, so right. So yeah. that's kind of standard architecture. Yeah, and I think, you know, I mean, if we look at IT across the board, I think that, you know, some of the IT transformation um, analysis that people are doing are are looking at that model as well. When right? you when you look internationally, because I mean, you're as a global company, you mm -hmm. get exposure to everybody. Now, you, you know, here in the U.S., sometimes we think a little too parochially about uh, you know the big systems companies that mm -hmm. are lodged here. They may sell globally, but where do you see the, some of the? Uh, you've got you've mentioned China. Are there other mm -hmm. areas where you're seeing sort of advanced innovation that? Um. It's going to drive yeah, changes. yeah. Actually, another emerging geo is Brazil. Yeah. Um, you know, Brazil is is growing like crazy, and As they're both a consumer and a developer of technology. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Can yeah. you talk a little bit more they're about mostly, that? I'm interested. In. Well, they're <laughs> they're um, you know they're looking at um, um, I wouldn't say funding. They're looking at 
bringing companies into Brazil right. to do research on technologies in conjunction with some of their local partners. Right. Okay. So, so there's some initiatives now that are going on with respect to that, and that's that's really meant to you know spur innovation from their local local companies. Right. right? And, and some of the local companies invest in creating their own schools and. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Right. To educate the workforce. Right. Uh, better. So we'll we'll see how it all plays out. Okay. Right. But but I you know that's definitely a growing geo. Brazil. I was just down there a month or so ago, and it's it's amazing how how fast they're growing. And, and they're, the Olympics, they're yeah prepping for the Olympics will be a big deal. Right? For the Olympics and the World Cup yeah, and the World Cup. Um, it was some of their you know. Now talk about your new role. Tell us about your new role. My new role. Yeah. Um, in storage. Yeah. That's the same role. Don't you have to travel to, uh, more? You said you were. Um, well, it's um, we're, we've been growing so much in the storage group at, at Intel that um, we've basically um, taken the marketing role and we've um, we've split it up into marketing alliances and and marketing products. So enabling the the vendors on one side versus creating marketing alliances with not only our partners but with emerging markets and um, so that's kind of an expansion. Okay, so it's um, not a change, it's more expansion. Yeah, it's more of an expansion because we've grown so fast. So we've, we've been so hearing much. a lot of conversations around tiering, obviously, and tiering mm -hmm. is a great concept. You guys talk a lot about tiering. What do people need to know about the, the, the tierings, the different tiers of for, for performance improvements? Well, tiering really gives you, you know, tiering really gives you that capability to optimize where your data resides and how it gets processed. So if you have data at rest or data at motion, there, there's two tiers there, right? If you have data that you're working on, like for instance, when we do tape outs, we have a, there's a lot of parallel processing, right? And so, you know, you could treat that as a different tier. So the tiering that, like we implemented at Intel IT, we had one or two tiers and now we have five and it's based on business process needs that we have and how we can optimize all of our resources across the board depending on what the data's doing. And I think when you talk about big data analytics, that's where it gets really exciting because the, the, the way we do things today versus having big data being in fast data, massive data, being prevalent in our data centers is totally different in how we're going to treat that data, right? The the data, the value of the data and the processing of the data and where it resides is going to become even more important because you're not going to need it all. You might need bursts of like DNA yeah. sequencing, right? Bursts of huge data, but at the end of the day, you only need a little piece of that data to identify you from me, from him, right? Yeah. So it's, you know. Key pairs and all this stuff they talk about in big data. Yeah, like Mayo Clinic and ASU, we were talking to them. Um, a bit ago about their DNA sequencing and and genomics and what they're doing with that and you know at the end of the day they're they're like you know what would be really cool is if we could have like a pay-as-you-go model in in storage so that when we need those bursts and we need that big analytics we can we can utilize it know that it's safe you know in their highly regulated environment right um, but not have to hold that overhead all the time because you know we don't we only need to store this this little piece of data here <laughs> So, you know, people are thinking about things totally what different. What are the top three trends that you're seeing in storage? Because obviously, IBM's recognized with this event that storage is the center of, of, the, of the conversation, they're expanding around it, but you guys are Intel, you guys are super geeks building out the, you know, the cores and all the performance, Moore's law, et cetera. What are the trends, the top three trends uh, from Intel's uh, seed? From a technology perspective, I think the top three are really, you know, continued focus on compute. Obviously, I mean the core is, and the core optimizations are, are important, but because of the way things are changing, I think I/O and memory are are the other two, you know, key technology things that that we're really focusing on. And how do how do we, you know, innovate and you know get a leap ahead in the, in those spaces because yeah, there's a it, lot of new. Yeah, because you can enable a lot of a lot of stuff from the, the right. data app data, for example, the big data tsunami. Right, right. So we've got some things in research there that can't really disclose. But Come on, tell us. <laughs> but faster, but smaller, <laughs> less expensive. Yeah, typical Moore's yeah, Law. Yeah, we can say that. You know, it's Moore's Law, you know, try to yeah. stay. So Intel chip sales going faster in storage or servers? 
You can probably um, can't answer that either. <laughs> <laughs> Let her go. Okay, we got. You can the, read in that in the analyst. We're getting the uh, <laughs> the break uh, from Mark and uh, the team here. So, uh, Carrie Jones Van, I know you got to catch a plane uh, heading mm -hmm. out again to HP Discover. Uh, we'll see you yeah. there. Yeah. We've got the cube there yeah. as well. So Great. on our summer tour, yeah. um, we've got the summer tour. We're going to be the Dell Busy Storage time. Forum after. Also the Cloud Forum with Intel. Um, we're going to mm -hmm. do some cube action there, kind of a mini cube, kind of hallway cube. And Great. then um, Hadoop Summit. Oh, yeah. Great. Um, Great. Right after. So next yeah. week, yeah, another working, busy week. Yeah, we're working on optimizing IA on Hadoop. Um, so that's... Um, really? So that it works best on IA, yeah. Can you share yeah. any details or just you working on it? That's all you can share. That's okay. what we're optimizing it for Hadoop. <laughs> Hadoop is great. I mean, Hadoop yeah. is getting better and faster and stronger. High availability uh, is coming out. We're seeing some big announcements from yeah. Cloudera. Yeah. Uh, Hortonworks has got some big announcements coming out as well. So that ecosystem, that community is growing very, very fast. Good to see what the industry is doing with They're going to go from batch to real time very fast. So very disruptive price mm -hmm. points. The economics will be uh, pretty interesting to watch on, on all across the board, from filers yeah. all the way to data, data warehousing. So, okay, Kerry Johns Vanos from Intel uh, here inside theCUBE. SiliconAngle.tv, John MacArthur and John Furrier here. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs>